Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're making homemade sweet and sour sauce. Now this is a really easy recipe. You just need a half cup of pineapple juice, a tablespoon of vinegar, uh, about one teaspoon of soy sauce, a quarter of a cup of brown sugar, and a tablespoon of cornstarch. Now we're going to take this over to the stove and get started. Now I'm just going to combine all of my ingredients um, in a pot and heat it over medium heat. You do want to get your um, cornstarch completely dissolved in your pineapple juice before it starts to warm up. Because if you don't, you will have lumps of cornstarch in your sweet and sour sauce. Now, because you're making this at home, if you want something that's lower calorie or sugar free, you can use a sugar substitute. Um, there's also a healthier alternative to that soy sauce. If you're making it at home, you can get this. Um, for, it's made by Bragg. It's the same people that do the um, all natural uh, apple cider vinegar. It is liquid aminos. It's a natural alternative to soy sauce. It gives you the same kind of flavor, but there's nothing artificial in it and it's completely organic. And if you're eating at home, you know, you might as well eat as healthy as possible. Now you'll notice here what we have in this pan is kind of a brown color. Well, even when it's hot, it's still going to be a brown color. The only way to get that bright red color that the sweet and sour sauce in restaurants has is to add food coloring to it. Uh, you don't have to stir this constantly, but it's a good idea to stir it quite a bit because it's going to get hot pretty quick. And if you don't stir it, what will happen is it will develop lumps in the bottom of it. So just for the most part, you do want to stir it either fairly frequently or constantly. But if you got to leave it for a minute, it's not going to destroy it. Now, you can use this as a dip um, for chicken or just about anything else. You can pour it over vegetables, rice, meatballs. You can also combine it with chicken and peppers and pineapples. If you used um, a can of pineapples and drained the juice off to make the sauce, hang on to those because you can use those and make some sweet and sour chicken and add those to it. It's only been cooking like two or three minutes and it's already starting to thicken just a little bit. Now you want do want to heat it to a boil or really, really close. And once it gets that hot, the cornstarch will um, turn clear. The cloudy color that you have when you first mix it up is caused by the cornstarch. But um, once it's heated to that boiling point, it starts to get much clearer. And you can see now it's getting much clearer. The cloudy color is gone. Now we're going to keep that kind of golden brown color. And that's the color you're going to have unless, like I said, you add the artificial color to it. But I don't want to do that. I mean, I just don't see any need in adding stuff like that to food. You'll get that bitter um, artificial aftertaste. But it certainly doesn't improve the flavor to have the color changed. And you can dress this up if you want to with some tiny bits of chopped red and green peppers. Um, even some little bits of pineapple if you drained pineapples to make the sauce. But you certainly don't have to. And you can pour this over all kinds of food to make a sauce. Or you can use it to dip stuff in. But that's literally all there is to it. You can see now it's very thick. When I stir it, it actually stays off the bottom of the pan. You can see the bottom of my pan. Now, if you wanted to make a great big batch of something like sweet and sour meatballs or sweet and sour pork or 
sweet and sour chicken. You might want to double or even triple this recipe depending on um, how many people you're feeding. We started with a half a cup of um, pineapple juice and it's going to make just about a half a cup of sauce. Maybe a tiny bit more, but not much. That's what you're going to end up with with this recipe. And like I said, if you want to make a big batch of something to feed a big crowd, just double it, triple it, whatever you need to do. But it's great for dipping. Um, if you're missing going to your favorite restaurant because all this craziness that's going on, you can make this at home. And you can adjust the flavor. You can add more sugar, you can add less sugar, you can do more vinegar, uh, more of the soy sauce or the liquid aminos, whichever one you choose to use. You need to be careful with that though. The soy sauce or the liquid aminos has a very, very strong flavor. And adding just a little bit is gonna change the taste of your food a whole lot. It does take a little bit of practice to get used to cooking with stuff like that if you're not used to using that kind of stuff as a seasoning. But you can see how super, super simple this is. You literally just mix it together and heat it until it boils. About the only way you can mess it up is if you don't stir it enough and you let it lump up in the bottom. Even if it starts to get some little lumps, if you stir it really fast, they'll dissolve as long as you have dissolved your cornstarch before it gets hot. Um, before we go, we have been giving away cookbooks. And I do have a couple addresses, so a couple of these will be mailed out pretty soon. But I have another winner, and it is Amy News. Amy, I will um, post a link to your page in the description of this video so that you know you are the actual winner. You have left several comments. If I'll uh, try to find one of those and comment on it and let you know that you actually won the cookbook. And I want to thank all of you who have entered. Your support really uh, has been overwhelming and so many people have bought the cookbook. I want to thank you very much. Um, it just, your support and your encouragement, that's why I do this and why I continue to do it. So thank you so very much to everybody who's purchased a cookbook. If you don't have one, and you want to purchase one, you can go to Amazon and just type in Hillbilly Kitchen Versus and Vittles and it will pop up. Or if you'd like to win one, we still have a few to give away. Just uh, subscribe. You do need to be a sus subscriber and comment on any video on the whole channel. doesn't matter how long it's been up. Hillbilly Kitchen Versus and Vittles because I search the channel comments, print those off, and then draw a winner from those. So, um, no matter what video you comment on, I will pick up your comment. And you can comment up to 10 times if you want. And any, anything else you want to say in a comment is fine. As long as it has Hill Willie Kitchen Verses and Vittles in it, I can search it. And I'll pull it up and know you want to win the cookbook. So, Amy, if you will get me your address, I will get you your cookbook. And like I said, I do have a few of these that will be getting mailed out um, this week. So, if you've already been told that you're a winner, your cookbook will be on the way in the next day or well, probably before this video was even edited and up, your cookbook will be on the way. Thank you so much for joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. If you haven't already, please don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. And until next time, remember to put God first.